Hi there, how are you doing? Hope you're well. I'm Alice, Stormy Stitcher, and this is my Floss Tube channel where I talk about all things cross stitch. Now then, last night I sat down with really good intentions and I filmed this entire episode, about 20 minutes worth, and then sat down to edit it. Lo and behold, I hadn't changed the sound settings on my computer, so none of the audio had been recorded. Hmm. Slightly frustrating. Anyway, so here I am again this morning, take two, hopefully this one will work. I have actually checked my sound first this morning, so fingers crossed we'll be okay. So it's been a little while since I last recorded and uploaded a Floss Tube update. Uh, things here have been incredibly busy over the last couple of weeks, so I've been finishing off my last few bits of work for university, and I've got my final exam tomorrow, and it's quite a big one, so um, yeah, lots of preparation going on for that. Then to top everything off, we've also decided to move house next weekend, five hours across the country, so lots of packing and preparation and stuff going on for all of that. So yeah, a lot going on, and despite all of that, I have managed to find a few hours to stitch. I have to admit, I did lose my stitchy bug a bit over the last couple of weeks, I think because I've just been so busy with university stuff. I got to the evenings and I was just way too exhausted to even think about stitching. Um, but then there has been days where I've been more motivated to sit down and do some. And when I do, I always feel much better afterwards, you know, it's really relaxing, so I'm always glad when I do. Um, I'm hoping that once we've moved and we're settled again, things will calm down a bit and I can actually get back to daily stitching, which would be really nice, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, so in today's video, I've got a couple of very small finishes to share, uh, a couple of whips, and I've also got some haul to show, and, and then right at the end, I'm going to do a giveaway. So stay tuned for that if you would like to try and win a kit. And that's to celebrate the fact that I have just reached 100 subscribers on the channel, which is amazing. I'm really, really appreciative of everyone who has subscribed subscribed. Anyway, so enough babbling, let's get on with my finishes. Okay, first finish is this one. This is uh, one of a set of four patterns called Easter Chicks. They're designed by Fiona Baker and I found them in an uh, issue of Cross Stitch Gold magazine. I can't remember which one, sorry. Um, but I stitched it on 18 count fiddler's cloth. I love this material, this fabric's one of my favourites because you get very tiny little neat stitches and I like this kind of um, pattern effect on the fabric and I stitched it using CXC threads which I've recently discovered and become a convert to. Um, so yeah, this is really cute and um, this was my first day of Stitch Mania 2020 start, so 1st of May I started this one. I had done all of the cross stitching on that first day so when I came back to it all I had left to do was the back stitch which looks fiddly but actually wasn't too bad once I got going and it really brought it to life. On my Instagram I posted a before and after picture of um, before and after backstitch and you can see the big difference it makes. So this will probably become an Easter card for someone in my family next Easter and I may well go back and stitch the other three patterns because they're all really cute and lovely Eastery colours. There we go, finish number one. Finish number two over the last few weeks has been this one, another little one. So this is um, Again, one of a set of four patterns. Uh, these were designed by Duren Jones and they were in the November 2017 issue of Cross Stitcher magazine. Um, so I stitched, oh, and they're called Christmas House Cards. I stitched this one on 14 count White Ada. This was another Stitch Mania 2020 start. Can't remember which day, somewhere in the middle of May I started this one. And again, I had done most of the cross stitching on the day I started it. All I had left to do really was the trees here and a little bit of the details in the windows and then I also had to go and do all the back stitch and I was thinking the back stitch on this one was going to be a bit of a nightmare but actually it wasn't so bad because in the roof here there was a lot of long stitches which kind of spanned four or five um, squares on the Ada so that didn't take too long and even the writing here which I thought was going to be really fiddly wasn't too bad. Uh, and the snowflakes were pretty at the top. So yeah, really pleased with this one. This is gonna be uh, either a Christmas card or a Christmas ornament. I haven't quite decided which yet, how I'm gonna finish it. So you need to have a think about that. And again, there's another three that I could go back and do in a similar vein, so we'll see. But yeah, that was a fun one. Glad to have that one ticked off and finished. Okay, so that's it for my finishes. Let's talk about my whips. All right. Whip number one. I've shown this a couple of times now in previous videos. So this is the Garden Stitch Along, or Sal, designed by the incredible Duren Jones and given away completely free on her Facebook page. So um, 
she was previously releasing each of these sections as a different chart but last Friday she uploaded this document which is the whole thing together in one PDF which uh, for slow stitches like me who've still got to catch up on previous weeks is really useful so thank you Joran you know it's incredibly generous that you've given this away to us for free because it's such a beautiful pattern anyway so the last time I showed you I had a bit done but still a bit to do since then I have finished off this butterfly in the corner down here I finished off this row of hearts and then I added this gorgeous little hedgehog here and the birds at the bottom so I'm using CXC threads for the inside sections of this, but I'm also using DMC and Anchor that I pulled from Stash around the edge. So a bit of a Frankenstein, a bit of everything in this one. Um, and I've still got to add the garden gnome and the little potted plant in the corner down there. So not much more to go on this one. I've got a real mental block about the border. I don't know why, I think it's because it's lots of this green. Um, <laughs> And for some reason, my brain is saying, oh, we don't want to do that. But um, yeah, I will find time eventually to sit down. I'd really like to have this one finished because I've enjoyed stitching it and I'd love to have it up and displayed. I don't know. I've seen lots of different ways of finishing this on the Facebook group. So some people have just framed it, which is lovely. Some people have um, made lovely pillows out of it. Um, I saw someone put it onto an apron. So I don't know. I could get creative with finishing that one off. We will see. Let's see what happens with that. So nearly done. Okay, what else did I work on this week? Right, I also worked on my Whipgo pieces. So in my first video, I tried to explain what Whipgo was, but I've realized now that I um, said the wrong name. So I said it was created by someone called Stephanie. I was thinking of um, Stephanie who created Stitch from Stash, which is another thing I do on Facebook related to cross stitching. Anyway, so the person who actually created Whipgo is Jessie Marie. And her YouTube channel is Jessie Marie Does Stuff. She's a really cool floss tuber. Definitely go and check her out if you don't already subscribe to her. Um, anyway, so she created Whipgo, which is the concept that over the course of a year, you work on your whips and you have them on a bingo board. And each month, two of them are called, two of the numbers are called. And some people set different goals. So they want a certain number of stitches on those pieces or they want to finish those pieces, etc. I've just said, the ones that are called are my focus piece for that month, so I just spend more time on them. And it's a good way for me to kind of work through some of my whip pile. Anyway, without further ado, the two whip go pieces that were called for me are Poplar Park and the Flower Fairies. So here's Poplar Park for June, and it's from Stitch Inspiration from the Golden Tradition series. And it's all black work, so I have shown this before in my first video. Let me show you what I've got done. Okay, here we are. So the last time I showed you, I had the central motif all finished and I think I'd finished one, two and a bit of this one down here so I've completely finished this one now and I've added this one and this one, okay. So there's something about this piece that's really lovely to work on. It's very meditative. Once you get into the flow of these repeating patterns and you've learnt what, you know, what the repeating pattern is going across, it's really easy just to kind of switch off almost. Um, and I have to be careful because sometimes I end up carrying it on too far outside the boundary of the motif. So um, yeah, it's easy to get sucked into this one. I'm quite happy with it. It stitches up quite fast because um, obviously these are only like little half stitches because it's back stitch. So you seem to sort of move along it quite quickly. So I have still got a long way to go. <laughs> I'm still really only working on this section here in the middle. Um, but no, I think it's going to be cool when it's finished. So I'm stitching this on 14 count lilac Ada, and the thread I'm using is a variegated silk, it's a Karen Waterloo's. Now I'm fairly certain I actually showed you the wrong silk when I first showed this. So this is silk, Karen Waterloo's, and it's in the colour grape. There we go. So it's um, a mixture of pinks and purples and sort of red, dark red, which is really pretty. And it's lovely to stitch with, very smooth. That's Poplar Park, and then like I said, the other Whipgo piece is my giant Flower Fairies chart, um, which I pulled out of a cross stitcher magazine back in 2005. So, my oldest whip 15 years. It doesn't mean I've worked on it for 15 years, <laughs> it's been sat in a box for a lot of that time. Um, let's see what I've got. So, last time I showed you, I said that I was planning to work on the flowers down here, and that's exactly what I did. So I filled in a lot of the reds, a lot of the yellows and oranges, and some of the pinks. And then I also worked on this bit of background shading down here, 
and then added the greens on the flower stalks. And then the other thing I did was I had a little bit of back stitching left to do on this fairy. I had the bottom of her wing and then some stuff around her legs and arms to do. And I'm really, really thrilled with how she has turned out. I think the shading on her legs and arms looks really effective. Um, yeah, I like the back stitch in her hair, her little curly red hair, it looks really cute. So I've got a lot still to do on this one, I think it's going to be a lifetime whip probably. Um, this gap here is supposed to be filled with French knots. I think there's something like 500 French knots in this whole piece. I think I'll probably end up using beads. I can't get my head around French knots. I know it's a really common issue for cross stitches that we find French knots hard. I've tried colonial knots and I do find them a bit easier but still I don't see myself doing 500 plus knots on this piece. I think beads will be the way to go so I'll probably add them on at the end. Anyway so in terms of this whole piece I've got obviously all of the other fairies and background to do and then it will just be back stitching the poem in the middle. So I'm really happy with that. Yeah. It's been nice to spend a bit more time focusing on that one in June. Okay and then my final whip for this video is Pretty Little Tokyo by Satsuma Street. So I know I showed you this year my whip parade um, and I was inspired to pull this one out again a few weeks ago because my brother who lives in Tokyo managed to get himself a job and I'm really really proud of him, really happy for him. So I had Tokyo on my mind so I thought why not pull it out and put a few more stitches in. So what I did was I added all of this building so far down here and I can tell you what it is because the nice thing about Satsuma Street is they include this little diagram which tells you what all the landmarks are. So the building I worked on is the Sensoji Temple. And again this is on the same fabric that the Easter Chick was on, the 18 count fiddler's cloth. I just find it's such a nice fabric to work with. I love the size of the stitches, I love the coverage. I like the kind of textured almost, textured feel of the fabric. It's good. So yeah, I'm very happy with how that one is stitching up. And I'm looking forward to this one being pulled as my whip go piece at some point this year. Because then I'll be able to really focus in on it and uh, get a bit more done. So that's it for whips this time. Let's move on and have a look at the haul. Righty ho. So... I did get lots and lots of happy mail over the last few weeks. I may not have been doing lots of stitching, but I'm certainly busy ordering stuff. So in my first or second video, I showed, um, I think it was second, I showed a needle minder that I brought from um, a lady called Amy Taylor, who runs Sid and Stitch. She's fairly new, uh, making needle minders and now grind guards as well. So I bought two adorable needle minders, both cat themed. I love cats, I always had cats growing up. Um, we don't at the moment because we live in a flat and my husband is mildly allergic to cats, but um, when we walk around our neighbourhood, we have like a network of local cats that we always check in with and have a little chat with when we're walking around. Anyway, so this one is obviously a cat cactus, how adorable. And this one is easily distracted by cats and fabric. Another super cute one. And the nice thing about these from Sid and Stitch is they always have really strong magnets on the back and they're really well made. So yeah, I snapped these up as soon as um, Amy posted them on her Facebook page. She also works through Etsy. She is based in the UK, but she posts worldwide. So yeah, definitely check out Sid and Stitch for some very, very cute things. I also ordered a big pack of plastic bobbins because I've got my whole set of CXC threads, 447 skeins to bobbinate at some point. However, once I ordered these, I then realised that in packing to move house, I've already packed my Sharpie. So I've got no way of labelling these at the moment. So that's going to have to wait until after we moved. And I found my Sharpie again and I unpack. This one, oh, I'm really happy with this. So this is a Facebook Marketplace find. I think it was on like a stash unload group or something. It's a gold collection from Dimensions, Mystical Wizard, and it's a used kit. So what I have got in here is the chart, obviously and remnants of the threads that were left over so I'm going to have to do a bit of um, matching up to find close enough matches to carry on with them and I only found this when I was recording this video for the first time yesterday there's a little spool of Krynik in here which I'd missed when I opened it initially how amazing is that rainbow Krynik I absolutely love it I haven't actually worked with Krynik before it's going to be interesting to see how um, easy it is to work with I've heard horror stories about metallic thread and I have used some DMC gold Although, having said that, this thread does include a worrying amount of, I mean, this chart rather, includes a worrying amount of this gold metallic. 
I don't know, it feels like okay. It doesn't feel like it's going to split apart like some gold metallic thread does. It remains to be seen. So I need to grab some fabric for this. I imagine it's going to be quite a large piece. It looks like the model is stitched on black. So that could be fun. But yeah, tons of cool detail in there. Love it. Okay, and then other couple of things I got were, you may remember in my last video I showed two charts that I had got. One of them was um, Always Flowers from Tiny Modernist, which is a collaboration with Caroline from Off The Grid Needle Arts. So I went ahead and got some fabric to start that one on. This is 32 count Permin in the colour Natural Light, and I got a fat eighth of it. And I've never used Permin before, uh, and it's got an interesting feel to it. It's almost a little bit plastic feeling. Maybe it will soften up a bit as I work with it, but anyway. And this is slightly darker than I was hoping it would be. I think I saw it on the website, I thought it looked just like the model stitch on the front of the pattern, but it's a little bit darker, so we'll see how it looks when I start stitching. But yeah, now I've shown it to you guys, I can actually start stitching on it, yay! Happy times! And then I also bought um, the chart previously, Michelle Bendy's Moral Compass, and showed that in the last video. So this is the fabric that I've got to work that one on, which is fairly similar to the one the model is stitched on, although I think that the model might have been stitched on Ada. And this is a 32 count Belfast in Vintage Stormy Night. So a nice bit of kind of mottling on there. This feels really nice and soft. I got both of those bits of fabric from Peakside Needlecraft, who I hadn't used before. They're a UK based company. And I discovered they've got a great range of fabric, but also a fantastic range of um, charts, especially ones from American designers, which aren't always easy to find over here. Okay, and then this is probably the thing I'm most excited about. So this is my last bit of haul. This is a whole chart called Pandemic by Long Dog Samplers. One of my goals as a cross stitcher is to start a long dog. It feels like one of those kind of landmarks that, you know, a lot of stitchers go through. That and a hay, I haven't got a hay yet, that's my other goal. But anyway, Jules from um, Long Dog Samplers released this as a free chart, okay? And it's a big one, it's about 20 pages or something. Um, and it's to kind of commemorate this time that the world has been going through. Um, so it's available free on the Long Dog Samplers website. I think the website crashed when she first released it because so many people were heading on over there to try and download it. Um, however, it's only free until 8.59 UK time on the 26th of June 2020. So if you're watching this in the future, sorry, you may have missed out on it, but if you're watching this soon after it releases, you've still got time to go ahead and download it. So it's, some people are comparing it to Death by Cross Stitch, which is another famous long dog sampler chart because it's a big one and there's tons and tons of detail in there and um, I've joined already a Facebook group which someone started to kind of uh, track our progress as we stitch this and people have been posting the most incredible colour combinations so whether they've chosen like bright green fabric or kind of um, different shades of orange and red to stitch it in or some people have decided they're going to do like loads of different colours because they're going to pull it all from their stash to represent the challenges of living through a pandemic yeah there's such creative ideas out there already so I'm kind of sitting back a little bit I'm not going to kit this one up just yet, I want to watch and see what other people are doing. I am thinking I might try and stitch this in silks, and because I, I had a look on um, Mrs Sadus silks and silks for you, and one of their big hanks of silk would be about the right amount to stitch this, um, and both of those companies do some incredible variegated silk, so I might go down that avenue, I don't know. I don't know, there's too many options at the moment, too many options, but yeah, I am excited to start this, and I think I'll start it definitely before the end of the year, um, if not sooner, we'll see. <laughs> My Stitch From Stash budget, which if, for those of you who don't know, is basically a, a budgeting idea to try and use a bit more of your stash and not spend so much money. I'm currently negative 40p or something, so not too bad. I've set myself a £10 a month budget, so I haven't been too bad so far this year. Um, but yeah, at the moment I haven't got the budget in there to actually go and kick this up. So I need to finish some more stuff, because in Stitch From Stash, that's how you create budget for yourself, by finishing stuff, and then you put money back into your budget. Um, there's no real money involved, it's all kind of a, an imaginary thing, but it, it's useful for me, because otherwise I would just go a bit crazy with buying stuff. So, the last thing we're going to do in this video is to celebrate reaching 100 subscribers. I have a kit to give away. Now, this is a complete kit. 
It is a little bit worse for wear. It's got bits missing from the plastic, but all the stuff inside is in good condition. I have checked. So I got this when I acquired somebody else's stash last year from Facebook Marketplace. So it comes with a nice piece of blue 16 count Ada, which is the original bit of kit fabric. And it also comes with all of the threads you need pre-sorted on a card with the numbers and these are anchor threads so they're nice quality and then obviously the chart is inside as well and all the instructions I think the only thing it's missing is the needle I'm pretty sure the only thing it's missing is a needle so if you would like to um, be entered to win this kit all you have to do is leave me a comment underneath this video that uses the word kit in it somewhere so you could say I'd like to win the kit or I'd like to stitch the kit um, and on my next video I will use the YouTube random comment generator to pick someone's comment at random I will pay myself to ship this anywhere in the world so you don't just have to be in the UK um, and please don't use the word giveaway in your comments because we want this to go to someone who's actually watched the video and who's interested in cross stitching Think that's everything I need to say so yeah looking forward to giving this one away in my next video there we go so like I said not a huge amount of stitching to show but some exciting haul and um, really excited about our pandemic one in particular I might get going on that sooner rather than later okay guys thanks very much for watching thank you for all your comments on my previous videos really really appreciate them and I'll see you again soon bye